guys welcome back to expeditions viking we left off in this hall um, last time and we have our first fight ahead of us before we go in there i just quickly want to make sure that i have everything equipped the way i want it yes that is the way i want um as for nephew we can probably not do anything about her equipment right now um, I want to apologize for the terrible, terrible audio quality in the last video. I have played with the thought of recording it again, recording it again, but I've come to the conclusion that I would not do that. Instead, we're just going to go on with the series. I do not feel like playing for all of it again. And enough talking, let's get fighting. After this loading screen. Dum, 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 dum. No, I'm not gonna cut the loading screens out. You, you can, you can wait for that. Long. I mean, I appreciate it when loading screens are cut out. I just don't want to do any post editing. All right, so most of the guests follow you outside and form a circle behind you. You're dimly aware of other fanes muttering among themselves. Nephia runs over to Katil to help him back on his feet. A streak of blood runs from his hair down his cheek, but it looks like he can still fight. Four against one, this is what the sons of Erling, Erling Torgil, Torgil's son consider a fair fight. These names, some of them are so hard to pronounce. Okay, Atar's brother, Tosta, sneers. He sounds drunk. Shut your mouth, woman. He started it. Okay. Uh, will he be alright, Kettle? Okay, so we can ask him if he's alright without getting ahead in the conversation. It's nothing. Tosta hits like a little girl. In fact, no, I'm certain Nephia could do far more damage when she was little. <laughs> alright. Okay, so Tosta doesn't like that. Um, so. What am I gonna say? You snakes, you will die for this. If you crave a fight so much, there are proper ways to handle this. Does your father know you're here destroying his name? I think that is probably what I should say. It kind of sounds, <laughs> it kind of sounds bad. Like, oh, I'm going to tell your dad. But at the same time, thinking back, yes, I'm pretty sure their father would not like this. Even if he had a grudge, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't want to openly do something such as this. Um, I think let's go with the second one. Okay, uh, when asked life is our fane, he can judge your honor in what happens here tonight. You've gone too far, Otter. There is no honor in this. I must take Isolda's side here. Huh, okay, so Ask life joins us. And we're getting threatened. Alright. And here we go. First fight. Let's see. So we have um, one, two, three, four opponents. And um, the good thing is there's no there's no um, order in which in which you have to use your characters. You can you can use them all at the same time. But that and that can be a bit weird sometimes like sometimes I wish there was an order like you move one character enemy moves one character you move one character enemy moves one character or something like that um, but actually um, in in Vikings it works like this that if you have if you ambush you have the first attack um, if you get ambushed, the enemy has the first attack, and I'm not sure what happens if it's like a fight that happens from a conversation. I think it depends. I think it depends. So we have two melee fighters here. We have a untrained level zero, an experienced warrior, untrained hunter. And untrained so the biggest threat is Otar over here 
So we probably want to go in on him. And um, while we're doing that, we want to get, we want to keep this guy from attacking us. So we will start with Katil, and we're gonna start with Cripple. And what percentage do we have here? Oh, it's down there. Uh, this can be sometimes a bit annoying, but the tooltip, you know, the tooltip sometimes does this when you're looking like this. It does this, so sometimes that's a bit annoying. It's the tooltip doesn't really isn't really oh wait if you're just far enough away it actually does swap to to that it actually does swap positions okay so we have a 83 percent chance so what we want to do is we want to use ranging shot yeah let's just use it Now I'm pretty sure that should be a bit higher. No, it's 95. It's <laughs> the way this RPG works is sometimes a little funny. <laughs> like the, the distance is is really not that far. He's not behind any cover, but but we we had to use ranging shot to boost us a 10% chance here. So we're just gonna use cripple. Hope we're gonna cripple him that means he's not gonna move next move and we can also walk past him without getting an attack of opportunity that's this little arrow you see there do you see this little arrow that that pops up into our path as we go around this that's an attack of opportunity this is a system I really like in Vikings uh, what happens is that if you walk past someone there's not they're, they're not just going to let you walk past them and uh, we're actually going to take him out of the way so they're not just gonna let you walk past them. So if I if I wanted to go over here and attack Otar without walking past Tosta, I would have first had to move Katil away so I can go over here. Because if I move past Tosta, he would have gotten an attack of opportunity. He's not getting one now because he's stunned. But if I try to move past Otar to try and maybe go down here he would not let me pass but that is actually what I would like to do I would actually like to go and take Isolda down down here and attack I think I can actually still do that in one move because I think I attack over two tiles um, I'm not so sure actually though but I, I think I can attack yes yeah, see this is too far this I can still do. I can attack through here because I'm using a Dane Axe that has a, a reach of 2. It, it seems a bit far away, I will admit that, but it's pretty useful to be able to have such a range. We could also use Nefia. She, she can also attack from that range, but I would like her to stay up here and help kill Otar. Although maybe we should do it the other way around. Maybe we should take Nefia down here and use... Isolda over here. All right, let's let's just first do this. I want to lock him up, so we're gonna stun him actually. So we're just gonna go in here, and <gasps> there he's stunned. So now he's first not gonna get an attack of opportunity, so we can just walk past him. And what do we have here? So we have extended, faint. Okay, so none of that is really useful for us right now. So we're just gonna go down here and we're gonna attack. Boom. Also, I probably want to turn non lethal mode on. Um, this is more of a decision based on. Like roleplay, you can you can decide that you want to be able to kill them, and that'll maybe make the fight later a bit easier. I don't know if it's really good for me to spill any blood here, so we're just gonna go with the non-lethal mode down here. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to throw a rock at Otar. Although he's stunned, do I have to throw a rock at him? 
Let's just throw one. We actually hit him. Okay, whatever. So, charge is actually a pretty good ability. If you're further away. So charge will do this amount. This will do that amount. I think this is better. Right now. So let's use that. But now I'm unbalanced. Because that was a huge swing. So unbalanced. What does that mean again? I think it probably means that I lose a turn or that I hmm I actually don't remember anyway end turn so now we're gonna get demoralized and we're probably gonna take a shot at her yeah and all of them lost their turns then we're just gonna do the same thing again here we're just gonna Activate cripple. He's crippled, can't move. And now we're just gonna take take Otter out here. With us life. But yeah, he's he's not down down. It's just you know just can't move anymore. So we're just gonna go in melee range here. Um, I actually forgot to do that the last the last um, round. I should have done that um, because what that does, if you get into an archer's melee range, he would trigger an attack of opportunity if he tries to walk away. Obviously, because he's directly next to you, you can't just turn his back on you and walk away. See, and I'm unbalanced, which means I can actually not move. I think I would be able to attack, but I can only do it from, from where I'm standing. So what I'll do instead is that I will actually go and walk past that guy, because he's crippled, and put myself into melee range for that guy. So if he wants to move, I get an attack of opportunity. Alright. I think we're going to move... Katil over here and we are moving Aslif down here so he's standing in the way of the archer it's not really so important I don't think this archer is really going to shoot but sometimes that's pretty good if you just put your tank in in the way and we're just gonna end the turn All right so demoralize because he did not want to move um, I don't know why he didn't attack, that would have been smarter, but whatever. And as you could see, the archer did not move away, just used the melee attack, and that basically, you know, takes him down. <laughs> that bird that just flew by startled me for a moment. <laughs> that was, um... Okay, so let's just throw a rock here. So we missed, harried, and now we're gonna do a lot more damage. I'm just gonna do that same thing where I'm balanced again, but should be fine. Should be fine. Now we're gonna take Ass Life. It's done. And we're gonna use Kettle to. We're just gonna use Interrupt here. And turn. Um, now, we can probably attack over here with Nephia. Boom. We can attack since we're standing right next to him, we just can't move. And one shot from here. Boom. And one last attack over here. Easy. We did take some damage on Nephia, but other than that, I think we got out of this unscathed.
unscathed. Uh, there's no injuries though, other than the one that Katil received from being hit over the head with a vase. But, but that happened before the fight. Um, you can get injuries in fights, lasting injuries, and you'll have to treat them or they get worse, there might be an infection. All sorts of things, bad things. So the better thing is to try to use whatever crowd control abilities you have, like stuns, kicks, cripples, to try to not take as many hits as possible. Because even if you survive, even if you can take the damage and survive, it's probably still better to simply try to not get hit or as little as possible. You want to try to get hit on your shields. You want to try to, you know, not sustain any injuries because you can really, they can really slow you down by having to treat those wounds. Anyway, um, we killed no one, so they are all getting up um, and I think now we're gonna get a, a choice. Other surviving brothers are slowly getting to their feet as well. None of them have any fight left in them. Nephew regards the survivor with a mixture of disdain and sadness. What do we do with them? So we could now execute them. Which might make a future fight or a future confrontation with them easier. But it may also put a dent in our honor because this is a funeral feast even though they started it it would be not very very honorable to kill them here they did an unhonorable un thing so we don't have to go down to their level of course I, I do want to execute them but I just think diplomatically speaking it's better to go with a lower route but I have decided that I want to play this playthrough very aggressively I want to play this aggressively and honestly, very brashly and harshly. I want to make a character that doesn't take no for an answer and that cares little about, you know, her own honor and she takes everyone down who gets in her way. So we're just going to execute them. Even though I would prefer to go with a diplomatic way, way here, but... But I have decided that she's gonna be ruthless. We're gonna see how that goes. It may go completely wrong. We may um, suffer from this. But that's what I decided would be more interesting to play. Because the last time I played, I went with a diplomatic route almost every time I could. This time around, we're gonna execute people that don't join us. And people that wrong us. Unless, you know... They can convince us otherwise. The grim work does not take long. Your guests look on solemnly as the snow in front of your feast hall turns red with the blood of the farmers. If any of them doubted your resolve before, now they see what you are made of. As life steps forward, he looks not the least bit tired from the fight. I supported you here tonight because Atar and his brothers were out of line. It is not the way of our clan to kill each other in drunken brawls. Isolder, daughter of Fenris, I challenge you to a duel for the position of Thane. Can you believe him? It's his right to issue such a challenge. His timing could be better though. And... We can ask him why he challenges us. And you can read that if you want. But it's just more of the same. And we're simply gonna accept the challenge. Continue. There. Um, before you wonder, we, uh, we would have gotten that duel anyway. It's not like killing them or sparing them would have changed anything. 
Uh, we got some skill points, so that's nice. We can also talk to a few people around here, as you can see. We can talk to Astrid, and we can talk to Hogade, or Hogada, whatever, Katil, Nefia. I think I want to talk to Katil first. I can't believe it came to this. A man that bitter with sons that stupid, that's just a matter of time. It feels like the whole clan has turned against me. These tensions have simmered for a long time. Fenris was a controversial pain. Those he angered fear that you bring the change they desire. It's not your fault. Uh, what actually happened here? I heard loud voices and went to take a look. They were all out here with their weapons having some argument over whether or not to set fire to the hall. Yeah, see, they wanted to kill us all inside. Sir, is I'm right? Ah, there we go. So we now know what happened. Um, thanks for looking out for us. Just wait for us next time. Next time, draw your weapon before confronting the enemy. <laughs> Great advice. Yes. So we'll have to deal with Erlinger after the duel tomorrow. Okay, let's go with the first one and dialogue. Talk to Nephew. Let me fight him. Oh, so she wants to take the duel in my case in in my in my stead. Um no, but I can handle him. And yeah, I, I have to take this fight myself. No, no. That's just not good enough for me. Yeah, I just just make sure you don't die. All right. Uh, next conversation. Dark eyes sees you up under elaborately braided hair. There's something mysterious and dangerous about this woman. You made short work of those mules. Woman after my own heart. How's that? Nobody fucks with me and lives. You seem to be similar inclined. Yeah, but I took no pleasure in that fight. No pleasure, no. But satisfaction, surely. A well-deserved victory. I think it was. I think it was. I'm glad I got a chance to meet you now. I'm sure this won't be the last time we see each other. If I remember correctly, she was School Skull Cleaver's house Carl. All right. Kind of a mysterious, yeah, there he is, school. Can't talk to him. Um, be kind of funny if, if this game had like a force attack. You know, like if I if I could attack him forcefully and I could now take out school and Hogada, that would be funny if if that was possible. But it's sadly not possible. Um, I would like to know what happens if I now take out school and half done. Uh, let's look at this thing: an unfinished runestone with only a few grooves carved to contain words. All right, so here's that. Um, we do have a few things we can pick up around here. We do have a corpses that we can loot, and um, a few a few boxes and a few things out here. So um, that's probably something that I am going to do off screen. For now, we're going to talk with Astrid, our mother. Your mother warp wraps you in a warm embrace. There's a hint of tears in her eyes. Well fought, my child. Your father would be so proud. The war, the clan is at war with itself. Was father really such a poor fane? Fenris was always more of a warrior than a leader, but he was no worse than most. This isn't really about him, it's about ambition and greed. There will be another fight tomorrow. Yeah, and I will not cheat. I want to face him on equal terms. Okay, so I can either get some poison or some stuff. 
but I think we're just not gonna do any of that. We may talk to them, but I don't think I'm gonna use anything. Let's just pick up a few things. Okay, we got some caltrops. We might be able to use those tomorrow. Can we equip those? Yeah. Uh, we might be able to use those in the duel. That's actually pretty cool. Um, getting those. We could be able to use those. Um, one thing that's interesting to note here, or at least I find it interesting, is that... Oh, there she is. I thought she wasn't out here, but... Seems now that we triggered that conversation, um, she appeared out here. Runghild. Okay, so we also got some numbing tincture. Restores hit points at the end of every turn for three turns, but slows the user by two moves. That might also be interesting for tomorrow's fight. So, I guess... Come on. <clears throat> Does not want to let me click it there. Uh, some rope. Oh, no, I wanted to pick that up. And there should be another corpse. Somehow the corpses aren't really that clear to see. Right now for me, I don't know. Maybe I'm just blind, but... It should have been somewhere here, right? Or did I loot it already? Yeah, I think it's there, but I already looted it. Um, there. And there's also some stuff up here. Ah, we wanted to pick that up. Uh, box up here. Um, this is really not all that useful for us right now. Um, so we're not really going to pick up everything right now. This, these things don't disappear um, the next time we get a chance to really do something here. And what we want to do is we want to talk to the smith about, about helping us out with the duel tomorrow. So... Erlen finally lost control of his idiot sons, did he? Glad to see you made it out of that mess in one piece. Um, it's been a long time coming. Mm, yeah, and now... Yeah, he wishes we wouldn't have to kill them, but under the circumstances, I'm not sure how it could have been avoided. At least, you know, we, we don't seem to have antagonized ourselves too much. Uh, we haven't gained too much infamy yet. But infamy is really the the name of the series. I really want to become infamous with uh, Isolder for uh, Do Not Cross Me or I Will Cross You. So we're just going to go ahead and ask if there's anything he can do for me. Um, and I don't plan to kill him. I just have to beat him to defend my seat. And such things rarely go according to plan. We could use sense to talk some sense into him. And the problem is we don't really have a lot of sense. Um, we only have one sense. So we could say we command him to help us. Or we just respect that but I think we, we should try I don't know if this is a random thing or if we just need one sense um, and it did fail so 
I don't know if maybe you can save before that and um, and get it done. I think we can talk to Sigurd, Sigurd about a trap. I, I don't really feel like it though. I don't. I don't feel like using a trap to win. Um, and we could also. Seek the advice of the old witch, which would be boop boop boop. Down here. Um, for some poison. But once again, I do not want to use such tactics. Um, but what I may be using is uh, what we've picked up today um, and one of those is increase the strength for three turns used twice for double effect but this reduces finesse and sense for the rest of the fight uh, we don't really rely on finesse and sense all that much so it's not really that big of a deal as for the axe I think our axe is better than this one yes it totally is and um yeah, we're just gonna have to face him. I might use some Caltrops. Um, although it just slows the enemy, it does not really do much else than that, so... Perhaps instead I will use... Perhaps I will use this instead. Um, which... I think these two items would be enough. If we can't beat them flat out, we're, we're going to use those. But other than that, I really do not want to use any sorts of poisons or or tricks or so to beat them. I think it has to be fair and square. Of course, if you're playing a character or if you want to play a character that is a bit, you know, that, that has a hard time in a fight. You know, like if, if you choose a healer character or something like that. The duel is pretty tough then. Um, we have a lot of looting to do around here. I might do that looting off camera though. Um, just, just don't feel like it's too interesting to watch me loot. You know, like herbs and, and crates and everything. But you know, like maybe I'll just do it tomorrow as well for now. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to end this episode here. And we're going to do the duel in the next episode. And I'm pretty confident um, that with our build, we would be able to do it. Um, oh, we have a, a few more conversations here. So I guess the episode isn't over just yet. I do want to do these before we end the episode. So let's go ahead and... Have a little conversation. Looks like you have your work cut out for you. You should take care of care to bring your clan in line before the alfing or your standing will be weak. Yes, that's good advice. What do you have to say? That was nasty that was a nasty attack, my girl, but don't be too distraught. You handled it well and anyone could have as well as anyone could have just shame your father's funeral should be okay we didn't read that fast enough well that was rousing what a bunch of cowardly cesspool hawks to come at you during your funeral but as they say it's not a good feast until there's a fight yeah just most people aren't too happy about us killing them anyway this now concludes the episode I will be looking to spend my skill points. Uh, we got 10, I believe. We have 17 that we can still spend, so we should try to take something before the fight. I will think about that before the next episode and tell you my conclusion before the next episode. For now, thank you so much for watching. This has been a Solar, Fenris Daughter, and me bringing you Expeditions Vikings and we will continue this hopefully tomorrow. I'm trying to make this a daily series but if I skip a day it's probably because I've been pretty busy so there's that. I'll see you next time when we are challenging us life. Until then, bye bye.